How does the concept of immortality inspire author K.R. Wilson? Today on All About Canadian Books, we are going to find out. But before we do, if you love books and the stories behind them, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted Tuesdays and Thursdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's guest is author K.R. Wilson. He is the author of Call Me Stan and it was published by Guernica Editions. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Kevin. Thank you, Crystal. Lovely to be here. I'm really excited to have you because I absolutely loved Call Me Stan. Oh, I'm so glad. And can you tell our viewers, what is Call Me Stan about? Well, the elevator pitch is <clears throat> you know, a self-described immortal uh, under investigation for a horrific crime, mm -hmm. takes his interrogator on a wry anachronistic tour of 3,200 years of European history or Eurasian history. Mm -hmm. um, to flesh that out a tiny bit, Stan, the narrator, um, originally named Ishtanu, was raised as a shepherd in the Hittite Empire um, you know, about 3,200 years ago in modern day Turkey. And over the course of the narrative, we realize he's been trying ever since to figure out why he doesn't die. Mm -hmm. So we end up seeing him in a, a variety of historical situations in a, a whole range of historical periods. He's a river pirate on what is now the River Danube. Yeah. He travels with Jesus and his disciples. He's a Roman legionnaire. He's a Benedictine monk. He's a 19th century Swiss wool merchant. He's yeah. a cabaret singer in post-war Berlin. He, he's, he's a whole bunch of things. <laughs> he's, he certainly was because that covers a lot of time here. Uh, well, 3,200 years. And it really is, Call Me Stan is a fascinating exploration of immortality and also outliving all of the people you love. Um, where did you come up with this concept, Kevin? Well, the original idea, the, the, the germ of the original idea didn't have anything to do with immortality. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we discussed in the more getting to know you one-on-one -on -one personal kind of questions that uh, I did a degree in music. And I became aware during those studies that the uh, 19th century composer, Richard Wagner, was notoriously a vile anti-Semite, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but was also fascinated by the Buddha, who, who is one of the world's you know, preeminent advocates of compassion. Yeah. Uh, the cognitive dissonance between those two things just always fascinated me to the point where I, I felt like I wanted to write something about it, but I didn't really know what. And then another idea kind of crashed into that. And that was the, the, the legend of this figure referred to usually as the wandering Jew, who, who is cursed to immortality for whatever reason. It depends on the, the version of the, the legend. And Wagner himself had a version of that character in his opera, The Flying Dutchman, who is this immortal cursed to sail the seas for all eternity, in that case, until he's redeemed by the love of a good woman. So once, once that uh, notion of the cursed immortal collided with the notion of wanting to do, write something about this, this weird contradiction in Wagner, then, then the book was kind of it kind of took off. And I that I mean that as I was reading it, that was one of the things that I couldn't get over. I thought like 3200 years is is such a long time. So the amount of research you would have done would be incredible. And I was curious, Kevin, I mean, what was your favorite time period uh to research and write? Well, 
you know, some of the time periods arose out of the the original idea. So because it was yeah. Wagner and Buddha, uh, I wanted to write something about Buddhism. Uh, but another thing that got me there was I was surprised back when the Taliban were originally in power in Afghanistan and they, they blew up these massive Buddha statues in the Bamiyan Valley. I was I was surprised that Buddhism had ever spread that far west from India to the point where there was this monumental architecture. So I, I felt I had to set something there. But other sections I ended up writing just because they interested me or they caught my attention over the six or seven years when I was writing the novel. So, so because of that, every one of them was fun in its own way. If, if I had to pick one though, I'd probably say the one that's set in the 14th century starts in continental Europe during the uh, the plague, <clears throat> and then ends up in in uh, in England for the peasants' revolt that took place in 1381. And I think why I'd want to pick that one is it, it's probably the most poignant of the sections because we really see Stan put down roots. Uh, and raise a family in a way that uh, that we hadn't to that point, and obviously um, establishing those kinds of personal connections and that kind of sense of community can can ultimately be pretty heartbreaking for someone who's immortal. Yeah, and as a reader, um, I really enjoyed going through all of the different periods with Stan. <laughs> Um, I, I found I, ha I actually had Google out and was looking at uh, the statues and the composers. So it's it's a fun journey as a reader, too. Um, also, the, I think the other thing that I couldn't get over, because it was such an extensive timeline, like I kept thinking, how is Kevin putting all of this together? So what was your process as a writer to map out um, Stan's journey? Well, the, the historical bits are all in chronological order. So, so at least organizing them was pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Not necessarily the order I wrote them in. I, yeah. I wrote the section where he's traveling with Jesus and his disciples first. Oh. Um, so it kind of depended what which shiny thing was catching my attention at which time, which section I ended up writing, or you know when I could put together the uh, the resources I needed to do the research. It took me quite a while to find a book about Wagner's time in Zurich, but I ended up finding a great one. Um, but so even with that kind of baked in chronological. Uh, ordering of the, the historical chunks. I didn't just want to write those and then lay them out and say, aha, I have a book now. There needed to be something to kind of organize them and tie them together. Mm -hmm. So there's this present day arc mm -hmm. <clears throat> with Stan being interviewed uh, by an investigator looking into a horrific crime. And and that has Stan kind of trace various things that have happened, you know, just in the last six weeks or so leading up to his interview in the, in the police interview room. And that present day arc has, has a structure of its own that kind of plays back and forth into the historical sections. Um, and we are able to see how from Stan's perspective, all of this historical stuff is stuff he needs to tell the investigator because it informs mm -hmm. the investigation into the crime. Right, right. I, I really, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, um, thank you. How does Buddhism influence you? My interest in Buddhism is probably more academic than practical, though I, I have done quite a lot of sitting meditation on and off over the course of my life, probably more off than on. But um, but I've, I've just I found a lot of in Buddhism and uh, kind of Buddhist philosophy mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense of a lot of things. And uh, as we've touched on, I end up managing to deal with some of of those ideas in the section of the book 
where Stan is living in these various Buddhist communities in, in what is now Afghanistan. Okay. Um, what's next? Well, I actually finished writing Call Me Stan quite a long time ago. Um, but as you know, the publishing process can take some time. So, yeah. <clears throat> and there were a couple of bumps along the way as well. So in the meantime, uh, during the pandemic, I, I have written another novel, a much shorter novel. It's, it's uh, kind of a departure. It's more of a, a noirish sci-fi novel. And that's out under consideration right now. So we'll, we'll see uh, what comes of that. And, uh, and you may be pleased to know uh, we haven't seen the end of Stan. Ah, um, okay. I'm working on a sequel to Call Me Stan with the working title Stan on Guard. Okay. <laughs> and I have one section that I think is fairly ready to go, but, you know, because it, like Call Me Stan, is going to be episodic over various historical periods. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have that one pretty much ready to go. I have two others that I have in draft and another one I'm doing the research for right now. So that's it's a long-term project. Excellent. Well, it certainly ends in such a way that you, you're like, okay, <laughs> I'd like to know what happens. So I'll look forward I, to that. I did leave room for a sequel, yes. Yes, yes, definitely. I have questions, I have questions. <laughs> and yet I think Call Me Stan is still quite self-contained and can stand Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. Certainly, you know, if you love historical fiction and a mystery, there's certainly a mystery going on there, a bit of a crime, like there, it's, it's a good book. Thank you so much for coming on All About Canadian Books to talk about it, Kevin. Thank you very much for having me, Crystal. It's been a huge pleasure. Thank you to our viewers as well. I'll put links down below so you can purchase a copy of Call Me Stan and also go to Kevin's website to, to learn more about him. And thank you so much for watching and thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you. Bye.